Hey class, Mr. Morigin here with a quick video on a triangle congruence proof. So take a look at the uh, figure there in the given. We're given that D is the midpoint of CF and AG. And that's it, that's all we're given. Um, we're also told to prove that this implies that CA is the same length or congruent to GF. So let's try to dive in and see how we can prove this. So notice this is not a triangle congruence proof we're seeing the two segments of the same length. So what that means is, if we can show that these two shapes are the same shape, then we can say that implies by CPCTC that their corresponding parts are also the same. So we're going to end up showing that the, that the triangles are equal or congruent, and th that implies, therefore, that the parts are congruent. So let's dive in. We're going to listen to the, uh, the two-column method. So you've got your statements and your reasons. So start with the given. The given is that D is the midpoint of CF and AG. Nothing controversial there. Now, that's not really shown in the picture, is it? Um, if C is the midpoint of C, sorry, if D is the midpoint of CF, right, the first piece of it, then you know, just using our brains, we know that that means that CD is the same length as DF. So notice that that statement, CD congruent to FD, is not given, right? So we, have, we can say it, and we have reason for saying it, and I'll explain what I mean by that in just a moment. So CD is the same as FD. I'm claiming that that's true. That's my statement. So what's my reason for that? The reason for that is, well, that's what the definition of midpoint tells us. The definition of midpoint. The middle divides it into two congruent parts, or two, you know, equal numbers. It's the middle. So, because we know what this word midpoint means, its definition, its definition implies that CD is the same as FD. It's not, that itself is not given. Those marks are not there. Those, this terminology is not in the given, but we can figure that it's true. Well, D is also the midpoint of AG, which is this line right here. So if D is the middle of that, then these are the same length. Now, I'm using different marks here because I don't know if DG and FD are the same, but I do know that the two purple parts are the same because D is its midpoint. So this statement would be that AD is the same as GD. And the reason that's true is the definition of midpoint. I'll just use these little marks to indicate it's the exact same thing to save some space. So in a picture like this, you, you probably have noticed by now that a good clue uh, that you want to observe is that you have an example here of vertical angles. So indeed, those two angles are vertical. Uh, it's not given, so we can state that that's true. And we have a reason for that. So angle, got to be careful with the name, CDA, if that's what I call the first one, CDA. So in green to D and then to purple, so that would be FDG for the second one. FDG. How do I know that's true? Well, those are our old friends, the vertical angles. Oh, am I on the edge of the screen? Here I am. Hard to see with black vertical angles. Okay, well, if you look carefully here, we have one of our textbook cases of, of uh, triangle congruence. you got a pair of sides, the greens, a pair of sides, the purples, and in between them you have the yellow angles. So. This is our old friend side angle side, isn't it? So I'm going to try to color code this so you get an idea of what I'm talking about. You got the pair of sides, you got the angles in between, and then you have another pair of matching sides. So side angle side congruence means that we can now state definitively, you know, not making any assumption, that the left shape, triangle CDA, the entire triangle, not just the angle, is congruent to the right shape, the entire shape, which is triangle FDG. Now, in many cases, this is where we would stop and say, okay, triangles are congruent, that's what we were supposed to show. But we're asked to prove that CA is the same as GF, right? I realize now that I made a mistake in writing this problem. Let me back up a step here. In reality, and order is important here, and I I made the problem up sort of on a whim so you'd have an example. CA should be the same as FG. 
So I'm going to pretend that I had it right the first time. Sometimes you learn by doing and by making mistakes, and that's okay. Uh, so statement six, I'm at the edge of the screen here. So C and A are the occupying the same spots as F and G. So that means we can say that C A is the same as F G. And the reason we can say that is that new thing we learned, C P C T C. That stands for corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, which is a mouthful. What it means is since this whole shape and this whole shape are the same shape, step five, then the parts that make it up are the same. Step six. Alrighty, hope this helps.